special shout out to executive producer Emma C. Thank you so much for sponsoring this month's content and we hope you enjoy the reaction. Thank you. So welcome back to another EP sponsor reaction. This one's for Hannibal, season one, episode number Trace. Do not forget to like and subscribe to the <coughs> notification bell. You guys have been doing a great job with that. Just keep it up. Tell a friend and keep telling all their friends to come on through. Thank you. Shout out to executive producer Emma for sponsoring this reaction and Emma coming through on the last episode to say, hey guys, another great reaction. So, everything Hannibal serves that you can't see the whole animal of, I think is human. The first season is very formulaic with surprises. However, the second season is pretty shocking all the way through and eventually without the usual killer of the week. The hallucinations and nightmares are a constant thing throughout the show, the majority of it is in season one, but they eventually explain the reason for some of it. It, it definitely leaves Will vulnerable to Hannibal. It definitely leaves Will vulnerable to Hannibal. Oh, this show gets much darker. Thanks for the reaction again. I would love this show to be voted into rotation. Same. I vote for it to be in rotation as well. Yeah. It right. could be much darker. Let's get into episode three right now. Okay. We'll see Previously on Hannibal. Can you tell me what that man is doing over there? He's some kind of special consultant with the FBI. I asked you to get close to the hops thing. I need to know you didn't get too close. <laughs> what you need is a way out of dark places when Jack sends you back. Last time he sent me into a dark place, I brought something back. A surrogate daughter? Yeah, the little hops is a suspect. She would make the ideal daughter, wouldn't she? You know that girl who played that Disney character. Dad? That's um, for you. Yeah. With the hair? Tangled? Oh. emotional creatures. Yeah. Perhaps they're like the equivalent of a four-year-old human being. They're smarter than a four-year-old. They care about each other. They care about their environment. They tread lightly through the underbrush because they don't want to hurt the plants. They're a lot like us. We're going to honor every part of her. Her hide is going to make a beautiful rug. Her leg bones we can carve into knives. None of her is going to go to waste. Just like we talked about. Start at the sternum. Keep the blade pointed up. Damage the organs. You ruin the meat.
say it. Say it the insulting way. Dogs keep a promise a person can't. I'm not collecting another stray. The first person Abigail talks to about what happened can't be anyone who was there when it happened. So that means no doctor left her either. Yeah, much less the guy who killed Dad. Chad's wrong about Abigail. Let me reach out to her my own way. Ended up killing him in the kitchen. Yeah. It's her dad. Oh, when he uh, caught up with him? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Oh, yeah, because he followed him home. <laughs> they figured out who he was. I'm Alana Blue. But that's his daughter. And Are you the doctor? other guy, that's uh, Lawrence's <clears throat> character, thinks she might have been in on the killings. What are you specializing in? Killing people. Well, her dream looks like she was. Yeah. Family drama. But again, I can't prosecute nobody for dreams. I asked the nurses if so. my parents were dead. And they wouldn't tell me. Just give me facts. Then I have to wait for you. I'm sorry you had to wait. I know they're dead. Who buried them? They haven't been buried. Don't you think they should be? Your mother was cremated per the instructions in her living will. <clears throat> My dad? Her father is more complicated. Because he was crazy? The nurses said you didn't remember. I remember, I just didn't want to talk to them about it. I sell the house. I guess it's mine now. I can use the money for college, get an apartment. What are all those? I brought you some clothes. That'll change my feel good. I guessed your size, so anything you don't want, leave the tabs on. I'll bring it back. And I brought you some music. Your music? If there isn't anything you like, I've got a stack of iTunes gift cards. I've got a stack of gift cards. I don't do well redeeming gift cards. Probably says something about you. Probably does. <clears throat> I got seven families waiting. No, let me rephrase. Demanding that we find whatever's left of their daughters. Abigail Hobbs may be the only person who knows the truth. You can't ask her right now, Jack. We have to create a safe place for her first, or you won't get any answers. I respect your sympathy for her, Dr. Bloom. I hope one day you'll appreciate my lack of... You really think Abigail Hobbs helped her father kill those girls? I think it's a possibility that needs to be ruled out. If Abigail didn't help her father, maybe she knows who did. How was she, the new son? Surprisingly practical. Suspiciously practical? I won't suggest she can be practical without being a murderer. I think she's hiding something. It may seem to be a trauma. Yep. Could also be more. She has a penchant for manipulation, withheld information to gain information. She demonstrated only enough emotions to prove she had them. You're beginning to appreciate my lack of sympathy. You said it may be more than trauma, yet you question her involvement in the murders her father committed. What I'm questioning is her state of mind. I want Will Graham to talk to her. Jack! Not yet. You are not Will Graham's psychiatrist, Dr. Bloom. Dr. Lecter is. And Dr. Lecter will absolutely let Jared him talk. Jacob Holmes, mm -hmm. the uh, Minnesota shrink, abducted and murdered eight girls over an eight month period. Each one of them? Same hair color, same eye color, same age, same height, same weight as his daughter, Abigail. There was a ninth victim who also fit Abigail Hobbs' profile, but Garrett Jacob Hobbs didn't murder her. The killer who did wanted us to know he wasn't the Minnesota Shrine. He was better than that. He is an intelligent psychopath. He is a sick.
potatoes. He will never kill like this again. So how do we catch him? Giving a lecture on how this copycat. Well, we need every good mind we can get on this. This copycat is an avid reader of Freddie Lambs and Tattlecrime.com. He had intimate knowledge of Garrett Jacob Hobbs' murders, motives, patterns, enough to recreate them and arguably elevate them to art. How intimately did he know Garrett Jacob Hobbs? Did he appreciate him from afar or did he engage him? Did he ingratiate himself into Hobbs' life? Did Hobbs know No, bro. I'm ingratiating myself into your known? life. Before Garrett Jacob Hobbs murdered his wife and attempted to do the same to his daughter, he received an untraceable call. I believe the as yet unidentified caller was our copycat killer. So you're not a doctor? A nurse or a psychiatrist. I'm a journalist. I want to tell the truth. This girl looks so fucking nosy. Sometimes She's that everywhere. Involves some deception. She's like old girl. She's like relentless. From what? Yeah. Can't record. If you tell me what you know, I can help you fill in the blanks. How I'm worried you? though. She do shit. She'll do illegal shit just to Your get the information. Your dad was the Minnesota too. Shrike. She a lie. Your mother wasn't the first person your father killed. He killed eight girls. Eight girls that looked just like me. Yeah. Yes. Why do they call him the Shrike? It's a bird that impales its prey, harvests the organs to eat later. He was very sick. Does that mean I'm sick too? That's all. You'll be fighting that perception. Perception is the most important thing in your life right now. I don't care what anybody thinks. You better start caring, Abigail. What you remember, what you tell everyone is going to define the rest of your life. Let me help you. How did they catch him? A man named Will Graham. Works for the FBI, but isn't FBI. He catches insane men because he can think like them. Because he is insane. Do you excuse us, please? Yeah, spoil my damn interview. Special Agent Will Graham. By special agent, he means not really an agent. He didn't get past the screening process. Too unstable. But I really must insist you leave the room. If you want to talk. I'm using you for a story, Abigail. just so you know. Mm, oh, yeah. This is Dr. Lecter. Do you remember us? I remember you. You guys saved me. You killed my dad. Yeah, that was me. But me, you remember him. Days, Abigail. Why don't we have a walk? up until the second he wasn't compelling me he was sorry to just hold still he was gonna make it all go away there's plenty wrong with your father Abigail but there's nothing wrong with you right, you say he was loving I believe him that's what you brought out in him it's not all I brought out in him Experience. 
bothers me a lot. I worry about nightmares too. Walter. So killing somebody, even if you have to do it, it feels that bad. Why is she worried like that? Special Agent Graham. I never formally introduced myself. I'm Freddie Lance. Trying to salvage this joke from the mouth of madness. Please let me apologize for my behavior in there. It was sloppy and misguided and hurtful. Miss Lovers, now is not the time. Look, you and I may have our own reasons. I would not for trust being her here, ever in anything that she said. She's so scary. She's such a manipulative little person. I can undo that. You help Abigail see me as more than her father's killer, and I help you with online ad sales? I can undo what I said. I can also make it a lot worse. You have a serious face, too. Miss Lance. Play no game. It's not very smart to piss off a guy who thinks about killing people for a living. It isn't very smart to piss off a guy who thinks about killing people for a living. <laughs> you quoted that? You know what else isn't very smart? You were there with him. And you let those words come out of his mouth. I trust him to speak for himself. Evidently you should. I'm just happy the story wasn't about Abigail Hobbs. Bro, I don't think I was saying a Muslim. Also, I want to inspire Will to be to a this is my whole objective it's right now. Home. I would like him to but become a killer. Of what she needs. It's been my plan since day Taking her out of a controlled environment would be reckless. You said she was practical. I mean, it could just mean she has some dissociative disorder. You take her home, she may experience intense emotions, respond aggressively, or reenact some aspect of the traumatic event without even realizing it. Well, where do you weigh in on this, Doctor? Me? Doctor Bloom is right. But there is a scenario where revisiting the trauma event could help Abigail heal. And actually prevent denial. And we have a difference of opinion, therefore I'm going to choose the opinion that best serves my agenda. I need to know if you're right about the coffee cap. We have no way of knowing what's waiting He's for He's over there just like, feeling himself. I just moving the pieces mm -hmm. to where I need to Thanks move them. The with me. And they don't even know. I know this hasn't been easy for you. How would you know? I've been writing about Kara Jacob Hobbs, spoken to the relatives of some of his other victims. Hobbs is dead. He served a lot worse than his whole family. There must be some small comfort knowing that justice was served. Comfort? Why is she doing that? My sister was impaled on a severed stag head, cut down the middle. He pulled out her lungs while she was still breathing. There's no comfort in that. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I am. But you have to try not to remember her that way. What do you want from me? I just thought you should know Abigail Hobbs came out of her coma. What is she instigating? The attacks on you and your mother were different. They were desperate. Dad knew he was out of time. Somebody told him you were coming. 
the man on the phone. It was a blocked call. Did you recognize his voice? I've never heard it before. Was there anybody new in your father's life? Someone you met or someone you talked about? Abigail, you may have been contacted by another killer. Copycat. Someone who's still out there? Can you really call him a copy? Can you me? He copied him like once. Did he kill again the same way? No. So maybe that was just the a The French psychiatric term. Madness shared by two. See. One cannot be delusional if the belief in question is accepted as ordinary by others in that person's culture or subculture. Or family. My dad didn't seem delusional. He was a perfectionist. You dad and I left hardly any evidence. Is that why you let me come home? To find the evidence? It was one of many considerations. Are we gonna reenact the crime? You be my dad, you be my mom, and you be the man on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Does she actually know it's him? To help you leave home behind. Does she actually know it's him? Oh, he'd be a call, right? Yeah. He'd be a call for the same old boys coming over. Yeah. Yeah. He would honor every part of them. It was to make plumbing putty out of elk bones. Whatever bones are left of those girls are probably holding pipes together. Where did you make this putty? At the cabin. I can show you tomorrow. Abigail, there's someone here. Hey, Abigail. So, uh, does that mean? Sometimes. Everybody on the block was on the news, and everyone at school. Such horrors. Did you talk to the news? No. No! My mom doesn't want me talking to you, much less the news. Since when do you listen to her? Well, clearly I don't. I'm talking to you right now. Everybody thinks you did it, you know? Do you think I did it? I don't think you're the type. Then again, I didn't think your father was the murder suicide type. Although I guess the hunting could have been a clue. Mine or his? Both, now that you mention it. I don't think you did it. I do. This is private property. You were the bait, right? That's how it worked. You lure them back to daddy for dinner. How'd you trap my sister? Did you chat her up? Hey, piss off! <laughs> Did you help your old man cut out my sister's lungs while she was still using them? She looks like the exact person his dad, her dad would take. Mm -hmm. What is that? Come home. No. Come home. Can you stop being such a bitch? Yeah. See you later. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to kill a best friend, though. That's just too close. Have you seen a young man? Mid 20s. Ginger hair. Unwashed. Tell you if I saw him, if you tell me why it's important.
Can I just need you to listen to me? I didn't kill that girl. Okay, I, I didn't kill her. I mean, you can't desert that though. You came in reckless as fuck. You gonna slam me to the wall, bro? You came in. Now this works so well that he can go down as the killer. Yeah. Wait, move on. Hannibal, just the girl. Covered his tracks. I got some murder on my hand. Oh, oh shit. This is a self-defense, Abigail. You got your name. I didn't. Then we'll see what you did. Then we'll see you as an accessory to the crimes of your father. I can help you if you ask me to. At great risk to my career and my life. You have a choice. You can tell them you were defending yourself and you cut this man. And we can hide the body. Attacked Abigail, you struck Dr. Lecter in the back of the head. Well, where's Abigail? Lecter took her back to the hotel. She scratched Nicholas Boyle on his way out the back door. The blood on her hands matches the tissue that we pulled from Marissa Shore's mouth. Then he, he got away? We'll catch you one way or another. Where are you going? So now that you're on a goose chase from the person that's already dead. Way to go. Home is no longer an option. Come down from there. So it's just murder, isn't it? Most would argue self-defense. Then why not tell the truth? Most would argue. There would still be those who would say you were taking after your father. You're glad I killed him. Mm -hmm. What would be the alternative? That he killed you? I didn't know if he was going to. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's the point. You're the one who called the house. No. You talked to my dad before. You do remember. 
And what did you say to him? A simple conversation. Ascertaining if he was home for an interview. Then why not tell the truth? I think you called the house as a serial killer. the dead. I'm way better. I made a mistake. Something easily misconstrued, not unlike yourself. I'll keep your secret. And I'll keep yours. The alliance. No more climbing walls at me. a little crazy with my both of this? Or did she not do nothing what I did? Alright, it was episode three of Hannibal, and I gotta tell you, man, that, that was a little bit of a struggle for me to get through on this one right here. It just didn't have that punchy punch like it did on the first two episodes that Shock and Reveal. We just carried on from the story we had from before. Still confused at the end, though, of if, if the daughter helped the daddy or not, uh, but even still... I didn't think she was going to be a prolonged character on here, um, tied to Hannibal and working with him. But I must say, Hannibal is doing a fantastic job of just fucking people's brains up, right? He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna screw around with the, the detective agency, right? They're going to be all thrown around. Then you got the, the professor, right, our guy. He's going to be all twisted in the head because things are not... Hannibal used that opportunity to capitalize on it and make him the scapegoat, but that felt very like, did they do that shit together? Yeah, I um, mean, they did have a conversation, I think, in the first episode or the second one, that she went to his... Um, right, I just don't remember the yeah, context of but it. I think they like, we work together or some shit like that. But, um, really good episode. Uh, thank you again, Emma, for sponsoring it, and I hope we get to check out another one soon. All right, well, look, thank you guys again for watching another EP Sponsor Reaction for Hannibal Season 1, Episode 3. And until next time, peace.